Hi everyone, we are at the Fuji Film India studio. Fuji Film is coming up with uh, large format cinema cameras, uh, GFX 100 Mark II. Uh, the link will be in the description. Today we have with us a very special guest, uh, a filmmaker based uh, in New York, who is originally from Kerala, uh, Jayan Cherian. So Jayan has made uh, feature films, documentaries, and short films. He is coming up with a very uh, special project, The Mum. Uh, it is about the city community in India. There is city community in Gujarat, Konkan, Maharashtra. Uh, uh, in Maharashtra, it is there in Murud. Uh, so you should check out the Murud port uh, if you want. Uh, so uh, over to Jain. Thank you, thank you, Kuldeep. Thank you for having me. So my name is Jain Chiriyan. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, how do I get into filmmaking? Uh, I'm a writer. Uh, basically, I was a poet and. I was writing poetry in Malayalam and uh, my undergraduate years I was majoring creative writing and film at Hunter College, New York. So uh, the first filmmaking experience started visualizing my poetry uh, using 60mm, 8mm films. Uh, okay. Usually we used to, uh, that time our school, Hunter College, uh, New York, uh, we have IDFlex cameras in film program. So from there my thesis film uh, okay. was about gender fluidity, mm -hmm. shape of the shapeless that year, mm -hmm. a student academy award nominee. Oh, wow. uh, then uh, I made um, certain films in New York City, uh, short films, documentaries. Okay. Uh, most of my films are um, about identities. Identity. How the gender identity, racial identity, caste identity come yeah, into yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. And how it is kind of performing in the society. Yeah. How it is. And the uh, trauma uh, aspect. It's a trauma aspect of it. So, the, the trilogy of the film, caste, race, and gender. Okay. So, gender was dealing uh, in shape of the shapeless. Uh, which okay. was I follow a burlesque performer in New York City. Oh, wow. The next one is the caste. Mm -hmm. Which was, uh, I come to India and shot um, Papilya Buddha, which was based in the Western Ghats, southern side of the Kerala side of Western Ghats. Okay. Uh, there is several land, land, land struggles happening among the Dalit people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are squatting government land, refused to uh, go out. The government forced them to out of the oh, okay. uh, place. And, uh, you know, in 1990s, uh, there was in Muttanga, there was a huge. Um, uh, issue happened with the indigenous people and the government and mm -hmm. a couple of people mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. But still, you can see there is land struggle, like a Mepadi, mm -hmm. Chenara, it's a huge, thousands of families come and grab the corporate land and okay. refuse to go. Oh. So, I shot in the live cast uh, this, this venues and uh, fictionalized that, uh, the history of the land struggle okay. uh, and using real Dalit people, central okay. character, one of the major Dalit leader, Kiran Bokudan, okay. Sati himself. So, so documentary subjects uh, put it in a narrative, narrative stu structure. Uh, it really helps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was the uh, pattern in my films I did. And later, that film went all over. Uh, it went to premiere at Berlin okay. and Montreal, Durban. And then I made another film about um, um, a gay painter in Calicut, who is only focusing on the male bodies. So, mm -hmm. uh, some conservative forces of the society mm -hmm. burn his mm -hmm. gallery down. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is a film about a, an artist uh, trying to express freely himself mm -hmm. in his domain. Mm -hmm. okay. And also, at that time, the kiss of the loud protest break out in Kerala, and the bloody napkin movement was. Uh, okay. Fuck out the people who start to send their bloody napkins to uh, some from uh, some Hindu fundamentalist people. Uh, that, that was a movement, bloody napkin yeah, movement. Yeah. Right? So on this background, I created a narrative, and using the people who involved in these struggles, the people using their body as a tool of political resistance. So that is the film called Cowboy Escapes, which was uh, really banned in India. Oh. And I had a huge fight with it. There was some controversy around Controversy it. because of the a painter paint uh, his lover as a as the figure of Anuman mm -hmm. and carrying the constitution of India and flying away. Okay. Uh, but he's nude. Uh, and as a Hanuman figure in nude was a controversy. Okay. 
Okay. So that was, I had to fight about two years in the court. Okay. Is the film available anywhere? No. Yeah, it is available in Amazon, I think, Amazon but it, not in India. Not in India. But uh, it is outside. Okay. It was distributed by the Californian uh, company, Aristica. Okay. Aristica Films. But uh, I think it is not available in, in, uh, in India officially, okay. but in Vimeo, of course, it's available. Okay. Okay. And this is another film which is right now Damam. It's the rhythm of the mom, which is focusing on the African diaspora in India. Uh, since I, when uh, my my undergraduate years, I was fascinated by the transatlantic uh, slave trade and trans Indian Ocean slave trade mm -hmm. was overlooked. Yeah. When we are studying the slavery. Yes, yes, yes. Nobody talk about trans Indian Ocean slave trade. Yeah. But you know there was a huge slave trade happened from India to Caribbean to Africa yeah. and also from Africa to India. Yeah. Yeah. So fascinatingly, India, Deccan was ruled by slave dynasty for a long time. And later in Ahmednagar, we have a great general, uh, Mali Kambar, mm -hmm. who born in Ethiopia, as a, his name was Chipu. Okay. As a slave. This was which year? What's, uh, what in 1400, 1400, 1400 yeah. And uh, he became uh, the chief, uh, he was sold in Baghdad in the slave market. One of the Gujarati merchants mm -hmm. bought him from there mm -hmm. and bring to Ahmed Nagar. He uh, was an extraordinary uh, uh, warrior and he climbed through the ladders of the, the army and he became the chief of Ahmed Nagar, chief of army chief. And um, who started um, Janjirai and Nawab, Siti Nawab yeah, and yeah. dynasty and everything, that was a huge. And um, he is the first one who defeated Mughal. He stopped Mughal to invade South India, the Deccan mm -hmm. yeah. But there is another um, line of migration or uh, human, human cargo flow was happening in India, which was um, Charter slaves. Charter slaves, they are packed slaves ships coming from Mozambique port to Goa and they are supplying slaves to the sugarcane fields of Haryal, uh, mm -hmm. for Belgaum, and Karnataka and Goa. And also they are selling uh, their slaves to kings like uh, Bijapur Sultan. Okay. And also they are selling their slaves to um, uh, Karnataka landlords, like the head days and head bars of the, the place. These slaves are scattered all around. And the cities right now you are seeing in Karnataka, especially Kongan, has the uh, same cities you are seeing in Bangladesh, they call Hapshi and um, the Shahidis of Sindh in Pakistan mm -hmm. and in Sri Lanka. And there is a larger African diaspora in Asia, the same strand of the pattern of the human cargo flow through transatlantic slave, uh, a trans Indian Ocean slave trade. Then, then also the abandoned slave dens, uh, a lot of slaves are released. And they, most of them, run into this Congan forest and have their own places. Then we see that, then somehow after 1865, there's a slavery end. And uh, the landlords in Karnataka find one amazing thing, they say they, the slaves themselves clear their land and make it arable mm -hmm. and what they do, they re-enslave them and move them to another place and then they oh. clean them. Okay. And there's the, the, the huge, the big estates right now in Uttara Karnataka, thousands of acres of Araka plantations owned by Brahmins are cleared by slaves. Mm -hmm. and this, people are the Hindu slaves right now, they are enslaved into caste system. They are in the lowest of lowest stratum of the caste hierarchy, the beyond the lift, right? So their most expendable slaves still remain. The hegemonically um, uh, they are uh, kind of uh, submissive to the, the Brahmin landlords. There is two segments, three segments. The Islamic community live in more in the ghettos of the cities, uh, and uh, Christian communities are more kind of intervention of the Catholic Church and everything. They are climbing into social mobility, and the latter is up. 
then you can see that kind of people in Michigan, in Chattikupa and all this area uh, in Canada. But the Hindu Usages are inside the forest and they're confined to the forest. Their education is, uh, chances are very low. That is the lowest uh, stratum even within the city community now. So my uh, this work is based there, the okay. city Hindu community in Kalapur, okay. uh, Michigiri, Kalesa and all these places. So from this, uh, the film is about a, a, a struggle of a boy who is trying to catch up with his ancestry mm -hmm. uh, through a magical element uh, okay. his grandfather, he inherited from the grandfather. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is the fictional thread of the film. Okay. And um, uh, we can say that it is a coming of age story. Uh, it's a coming of age story. Coming to towns with generational trauma. No, no. This is the thing is that uh, about the music. Okay. For the city people, you can see they lost everything. Their language, their religion, uh, everything taken. Master's religion became their religion. Oppressor's religion. Everything gone. Only they have uh, their own, their body and the body type also changing. The recent study in Alapur come out the genetic study, 41% of the cities have a Brahmin gene. Because these yeah. girls are using for three, four generations of sexual objects. So their genes are really melting out. But the only thing they have their body and their music and rhythm is any That's of why you try to capture the, the musical aspect. Musical aspect. Okay. Actually the mom is their ancestor, the part of their ancestral worship and part of their recreation, uh, part of their religion too. And also dancing and the music is kind of uh, uh, their tool of healing and their spirituality. Uh, and if you look at back the Bandhu tradition in Africa, you can see their ancestral worship is very close to this. But in, in Karnataka, you can see Hiryari worship of Hindus the one Shraddha, one day in a year they worship their uh, ancestors and that's it. But for uh, Siddhi people, their parents, their Hiryaru rule, the, their dead parents are the um, presence in their life every day. Every single room, uh, house have a Hiryaru room. Even though they are Christians or they are Muslims or Hindu, they are secretly worshipping this. Th doing this, they call it Maan every year by uh, after Navaratri, they do sometimes in the uh, in, in, uh, in April. There is a place called Satan Vale uh, in Niva, um, near Gorakpur, between the Angola and the Alapur. You can see you know, the highway uh, is in the middle of the forest. There is a city center, and there is a stone uh, believed to be coming from Africa. Okay. So there's a goddess Siddhinas. Siddhinas is the worship there in April mm -hmm. 5th or April 4th. All the cities, irrespective of the religion, get together there. They cut the poly, uh, uh, the chicken, yeah. and um, they cut um, uh, like a bakri, yeah. like yeah. goat, goat, yeah. and uh, they do the puja. Yeah. And now, under the um, Puta Siddhi, now he's in charge. There's a city center, and um, like um, um, our uh, MLC. The Shandaram Siddhi, he's from Siddhi community. Uh, actually, he was well, part of the Vanavasi Kalyan, now he's BJP, and he became an MLC. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he is the, one of the community leaders, and several other people in the community, like Jairam Siddhi, the lawyer, Prashant Siddhi, the comedian, Girija Siddhi, they are all acting in the yeah. film. They are yeah. all part of the film. So, this is the, the act of making this film is bringing these community leaders to, to the poor, yeah. to, to bring all people. Together. So, significantly, the film uh, have the first feature film uh, to integrate all this aspect of Siddhi community in Karnataka. But the Siddhi community in the Gujarat is significantly different. The language different, is different. The dialect is a Creole of Kongani, not mm -hmm. Kongani. So, that is the, the background of the film. And this is in the WIP here. Yeah. And, um, and we are cutting, final cut is going okay. on right now. Okay, and uh, when do you think the film will be finished? Finished already. Already oh. finished and uh, we have to do some touch up in the VFX mm -hmm. and uh, within a couple mm -hmm. of months it will be out. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and uh, we are looking for mm -hmm. world premiere. 
we need a decent uh, festival to premiere the film mm-hmm. and the distribution okay and all that and uh, do you uh, do you have plans for a theatrical release in india yeah once after the festival circuit and uh, we plan to have a theatrical circuit Okay. Uh, a theatrical release because okay. it has a, a very entertainingly uh, entertaining aspect of it okay. the music yeah. from the beginning to the end uh, there yeah. is a lot of uh, musical expressions okay. so the people express through the music mm-hmm. yeah and how did you work with the non actors i am sure there must be non actors so i think i have a history of working with all actors mm-hmm. with all previous films uh, mm-hmm. acting they are actors but not trained actors so uh i started meeting people and they have a small theater group something like that i have workshop 15 days of workshop mm-hmm. and uh, i started the film uh, writing and visiting the communities since 2016 now 2003 and uh, it's uh, how many years now the central character of the film uh, who is jairam sidi a boy chinmay sidi my friends um i met him when he was 6 year old right now he is tall and okay. he acted in the film okay. so i was living with them i was breathing the film mm-hmm. i was like yeah. surviving with them yeah so many years have gone into yeah. making the film the research and everything so we have so wonderful yeah and and what kind of equipment did you use on what yeah. camera did you shoot the film the shooting film uh, we used the red gemini mm-hmm. the final shoot mm-hmm. the before we used uh, several kind of uh, iphone to small cameras but the shooting the real shooting went to gemini mm-hmm. and we shoot on 4k okay. and 6k okay. the name of the book is this very old book stella fonseca was a new york times uh, journalist i think in 1970s she wrote a, a book called uh, bury me standing that is about the gypsy genocide in europe uh, everybody talk about jewish genocide but um, no, no, this no. is so no. very um, seldom circulate story mm-hmm. uh, that is one of the inspiring uh, stories from native american perspective mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. bury my heart at wounded knee by d brown mm-hmm. is about the uh, oglala shootout and uh, mm-hmm. the native american resistance against europeans mm-hmm. in united states yeah. you watch the killer moon recently right yeah. so this is 10 times bigger than that uh, uh, okay. it was the the first time a native american leader called uh, crazy horse uh, defeated american army seventh artillery by mm-hmm. general run by general custer, custer mm-hmm. uh, in the battle of mm-hmm. it's called the battle of the pole and and there the historical event was written by peter tas in the face uh, american writer uh, he had a famous book called uh, in the spirit of crazy horse this all books are inspired me <laughs> i love terence malick's a hidden life hidden life okay okay lovely so he is a he is wonderful he is a solid yeah yeah, yeah. So, got it and and the song maybe from city uh, community yeah, yeah the song my always favorite song i try to integrate that into my recent film billy holiday's um, strange fruits hanging from the trees he see that a uh, the lynching happens in the southern uh, united states during the time of the jim crow laws uh, a strange fruits hanging from the trees and uh, blood in the leaves mm-hmm. that is african americans are lynched by the white mob mm-hmm. and uh, their dead bodies are hanging from oh, yeah. but that strange fruits hang from the trees of the lucknow the trees of deep india the relevant and, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. Oh. so that was the music yeah. billy holiday uh, inspired by the song the song inspired by this events and uh, famous one is the strange fruits and from the trees that is a song met up her yeah, yeah, yeah. okay thank you thank so much jan uh, for your time and best of luck for okay. your film okay. yeah thank, thank you, you. So